level 6 before present. But where are that to be your review? Say back and then for your show. Once again, welcome to another Lemon C64 Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Jeff Minto's classic Hover Bover, and this was developed by Lomasoft and released by Jeff Minto via Lomasoft via his mum in 1983. See, on the title picture, Jeff Minter absolutely loves llamas, if that is actually supposed to be Jeff Minter on that title screen, and I won't comment any further on that. You can see it opens with some jolly music, and you can see some presentation is there on the title screen. And eventually, if you leave that title screen alone for virtually ages, it comes up with that high scores, and you can see virtually zero scores on there and then finally we get some options you can press F1 to change the entry loan of the first eight available in the game and you can also press F3 to change the players and you can also have one or two sticks and so let's just change this to entry loan number one for this and pressing fire let's check this game out Jim won't mind if I borrow his mower, and so this is life one, this is Jim's mower, this is us collecting it from his garage, and we are playing as Gordon in this game, and it's Gordon's job to mow the lawn. see a number of characters on the screen, first of all Gordon mowing away with his mower and also there is a blonde guy, that's the neighbour and he will show up on every single level and also the neighbour will try to get our mower away from us, maybe he wants to borrow the mower or maybe he's just sick of it but he will try to grab that and we also have a dog, if the dog collides with our mower then that will be disabled for a while and by pressing fire we can set the dog onto the neighbour and that will keep him at bay for a bit. The dark haired guy is actually the gardener and he appears if we mow any of the flowers on the level and you can see that we've mowed several of the flowers already. You can set the attack dog on the gardener and usually the neighbour will be afraid of the dog and will keep his distance. case the gardener grabbed the mower and that's our first life over but I'll just nip in and borrow Tom's mower. Hopefully Tom won't mind his nicking his mower. Let's try again and this time let's try not to get the gardener involved and Ordinarily, the dog will wander around at random. If the dog collides with our mower, it will be disabled. The dog doesn't like the mower, and the dog will try to attack the mower any given opportunity. That will make it overheat, and you can see more overload at the bottom of the screen, and we will begin to flash. Luckily, the hedges keep the neighbour away, and as long as we keep the dog and the neighbour behind the hedge, we are free to mow. Unfortunately, once again, we've managed to mow over a flower and now it's difficult with the dog because the dog loyalty you'll see at the bottom of the screen goes down every time we press the fire button. 
We have to press the fire button to make the dog bark and run towards the enemies who will both run away at the sight and the sound of the dog barking. We have to do that in order to cool down our mower and to get the last patch of grass. You can see the neighbour will walk all over the flowers involved and also the gardener will as well and it's pretty difficult at this stage unless you go around to the other side and trap all of the parties behind a hedge. Make the mower cool down just by going over some grass that's already been mowed or we can simply wait around and that will eventually cool down. Holding down that fire button we've managed to get down almost the whole of the lawn to mow. Unfortunately we've missed the last bit of it and now we're struggling to get that before we lose total dog loyalty and having done that the dog will then rampage around that level uncontrollable and now you cannot defend against any of the neighbours. Good old Alf, he's a decent chap, he won't mind me borrowing his mower just to finish off that last bit of grass on the very first level. messed that up straight away but now I've completed it. At the end of each level the dog loyalty bonus will be ticked down. If you don't use the dog very much by pressing that fire button the dog loyalty won't go down. So if you can imagine keeping the dog and the neighbour in the corners of the map that means that they don't attack us and it means that we can mow certain areas virtually unchallenged the dog is very well trained and that's the only thing that won't go into the flowers the neighbour doesn't really care about the flowers and neither does the gardener. According to the manual, the neighbour is supposed to avoid the flowers and the gardener, but they don't. They just walk straight over them and the dog will walk straight over that damn mower all the time and make it overlooked. So let's outsmart the dog and the neighbour. Let's hide behind this hedge and mow at our leisure. cleared the safe patch it's time to do it all again and this time try to get the opposite side and trap the guys in this side and then that should hopefully mean we can mow the other patch of the lawn in safety but it's not always easy to get that set up and there are maybe 15 20 levels in the game and you can select between the first eight of course on the title screen kill him rover seize go boy hit kill 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 Unfortunately you cannot kill the neighbour but you will get points for mauling the neighbour and that's always a good feature so it's great to maul the neighbour for extra points. But that's nothing compared to the dog loyalty that you'll get at the end of the level if you manage to have any dog loyalty that is. If not you'll just have to run around trying to avoid it. Game over! And enter your name, player one. And using the arcade style, we can push forward and backwards on our controller. Luckily, my first name is not that hard to put into these types of games. Then get to see that high score and high score table. Let's check out another level. And let's check out maybe level three this time, since that's the next one in the chain. And let's see how far we can get with this game. This 
great to see the user defined graphics in this game and they use all the tricks in the book to make this game sellable back in the day and the cut above many games on the Commodore 64 they have humour in the game and you can see captions as well as various things happen so there is a lot going on and it's very simple on the surface simply to mow alone and yet it's so complicated as well with bunches of guys and critters walking around affecting those in different ways and trying to outthink those guys behind hedges is always a best manoeuvre. The sound effects are basic, it's basically us mowing and an English country garden played in the background and so they didn't have to put music in this game but it makes it extra funny to do that and you can just imagine somebody like Basil Fawlty trying to mow along with all this stuff going on constantly telling the dog to attack the neighbours whilst constantly battering the lawnmower with a stick trying to get it to mow in a straight line and these kind of things were only possible in the early days of computers because who would sell a game like this today? There was Advanced Lawn Mower Simulator which was perhaps a response to this that came out on the ZX Spectrum I believe and that was simply a cover disc demo of a guy mowing a lawn. This takes it to another extreme of us actually mowing a lawn and it gets pretty difficult sometimes when the dog runs into us but we have to use the dog constantly to try and to dissuade that neighbour. That means we have to hold down the fire button, keep them both at bay and hopefully run away to another part of the map. I think given these plain graphics they could have been done a lot better but this was 1983 done by Jeff Minter in his bedroom and he got his mum to take these games around to the publishers and try those games out and try to explain the game to the publishers so his mum should have got the award for trying to convince them to sell his game. You can see every one of these buildings is different, it's a different brown door and it's a different garage colour and maybe different windows as well. Maybe this was modelled on his actual neighbours. So it's great to see that dog tolerance and that dog loyalty all the way back up every time we start another level. And dog tolerance and loyalty in this case is a menace because it will go down very quickly indeed. And the mower, well as long as you keep to the bits that you've already mowed, the mower temperature shouldn't get too hot when you're trying to clear the edge of the level. Unfortunately it's all too easy to take shortcuts and that basically writes off that level and so all these levels are fiendishly difficult with the one guy as soon as you get the gardener involved it's even more difficult than that so it's best to use your head and not race the mower and try to do it slowly, slowly as possible. I love my racing games so I love to do it quick and that quickly gets us into trouble. We had this back in the day but of course the phenomenon of hover bother speaks for itself and spans the generations as one of Jeff Minter's classics and it's definitely featuring a llama but it doesn't have a llama or a goat or a camel in the actual game so it's pretty unique in that fact and there were only a few different Jeff Minter games which didn't feature those kinds of animals most of those were shoot 'em ups and not that many featuring a hover. Apparently there was a sequel in the works, although I'm not quite sure how far they got with that. And let's move on to that next level. 
to those scores, the low score came from Lemon64, who only gave this 7.5 out of 10, which is 75%. The next low score went to CMVG, who gave this 80%, TV Gamer gave this 90 and apparently Commodore User gave this 100%, 5 out of 5, and Home Computing Weekly gave this 100% which gives this game the average score of 9 out of 10. I think it's not stood the best test of times, but it's still a highly playable game and a riot for kids everywhere, and it's worth a fun dab every now and again. Thank you.